The Mach Wheel Tour Plus is by far the largest and heaviest electric bike I've ever tested, designed to be a high-speed, long-range, all-terrain monster. But does it actually live up to its rugged appearance, and is it worth its $1,600 price tag? Mach Wheel sent the Tour Plus out to me to put to the test, and after beating it up on and off-road for the last couple weeks, hence all the caked on dirt you'll see in this video, here are my thoughts on it. First off, the components are as standard as they come for a bike in this price range. 7-speed Shimano drivetrain and shifter, front and rear zoom mechanical disc brakes, front 110mm travel suspension fork with lockout, 6000 series aluminum frame, 750 watt hub motor, 48 volt 16 amp hour battery, twist throttle, front and rear lights. The full size frame sits on 26 inch diameter wheels with large 4 inch wide fat tires that extend the diameter of the wheels to about 30 inches, making it comparable in height and size to a 29 inch mountain bike. This large size accommodates my 6 foot 1, 200 pound frame really comfortably. This was actually the first e-bike I have ever tested where the included seat post adjusted high enough to where I like it. This bike is clearly a whole different beast than your average folding fat tire e-bike. It's not unruly or necessarily hard to ride and control, but you can definitely feel the weight and size of this bike when you're on it. And if you're smaller in size or looking for a more manageable, approachable first e-bike, then you might want to go with something smaller and less bulky. For me, it was refreshing to ride a bike that has some substance and weight to it. It felt super stable and was honestly confidence inspiring to ride. The sturdy feel of the bike plus the large surface area of the fat tires made high speed riding and cornering very stable, though it definitely isn't as nimble as a bike with narrower tires or smaller wheels. The large build, front suspension, and fat tires all give this e-bike a beefy, rugged look and the impression that this should be able to handle any type of terrain. Obviously, it handled paved roads with ease and the speed of this bike actually surprised me, clocking in top speeds of around 30 miles an hour. Potholes and bumps in the road were no issue and hopping on and off curbs was a breeze. I actually think that urban riding is where this bike shines the most despite looking like it's built for off-road riding. So how does it perform off-road? Well, just all right, to be completely honest. I was looking at this to be an off-road monster and to eat up all sorts of terrain and potentially be a decent downhill mountain biking bike for my local trails. While it does do better on rough terrain than your average commuter e-bike, I didn't notice any significant advantage that the Tour Plus had over folding fat tire e-bikes on this type of terrain, despite the size advantage that it has. The size and weight of this bike makes it feel a bit awkward and jangly on chunkier terrain. It is really well suited for more mild dirt roads with the tires offering plenty of traction and allowing it to maintain almost the same speeds as it would on a paved road. The brakes are quite honestly mediocre, just barely offering enough stopping power for this bike. These really should be hydraulic disc brakes rather than mechanical given the speeds this bike is capable of and its 80 pound weight. The battery is a big one, matching the size of the bike. It pulls out of the bottom, an unusual choice, and it is a bit awkward to get out, forcing you to maneuver it around the front fork. The 16 amp hour battery gave me about 15 to 20 miles of range per charge. I did run the bike in the highest of the five riding modes most of the time I used it, so 15 miles is that lowest end of the range. Running the bike in mode 3, which is the middle riding mode, gives you good speed of around 20 miles an hour and will help stretch the range out to 20 miles or potentially past that. Riding in the lowest two speed modes will give you a decent workout, but it will extend the range much past the 20 mile mark. The 48 volt battery means that you get a bit of fall off in performance for the last third or quarter of a battery charge. I lost a couple miles an hour of speed in each riding mode for the last few miles of range each time I drained the battery. The bike is completely unrideable once the battery dies. It feels like the bike is actively fighting against you even on flat ground if the battery's dead. I've noticed this trend with all the fat tire e-bikes I've tested and it's honestly a bit frustrating since one of the benefits of an e-bike is supposed to be that you can continue to use it even after the battery drains. That's not the case with fat tire e-bikes. It includes a twist throttle on the right hand, which is my least favorite type of throttle on an e-bike. 
It's awkward to use because you have to shift your hand over from its natural resting place on the grip. I only found myself using it on long stretches of straight road where I was maintaining the max speed and didn't feel like pedaling. The rest of the time, the pedal assist is definitely the way to go. The shifter, while being the usual thumb actuated 7 speed Shimano I like, does require your hand to shift off of the grip to operate, so the whole right side of the handlebars is a little awkward. As with the throttle though, I rarely find myself using the shifter staying in the top 2 or 3 gears when riding in the higher pedal assist modes. The lower gears are really only good for steep hills and if you ride the bike in the lower assist modes. The display is very straightforward, giving you your speed, riding mode, battery level, and a few cyclable options like the odometer and current trip distance. The speed reads a couple miles an hour faster than the actual GPS calculated speed, and the battery display isn't particularly precise or accurate, making it hard to rely on for your actual battery level. There is a horn button and light button as well as the power mode and pedal assistance mode buttons on the left side of the handlebars. The horn is annoying and decently loud, perfect for pestering those darn pedestrians in your way, and the light is mediocre but might pass by itself in a pinch if you needed to ride home in the dark. This bike has a lot of the small issues that come with these Chinese e-bikes. Slightly untrue wheels, rubbing brakes that need constant adjusting, kickstand screws coming loose and falling out while you're riding, and this one also had a loose headset. All these issues are fixable with even a surface knowledge of bike repair and a few tools, but it does lend a bit of a cheap air to a fairly expensive bike. However, with any product like this, as long as you're willing to put in the time to take care of it, it should operate well and be worth the price tag. The competition for this bike, meaning other large fat tire e-bikes like this, tend to sit around the same price or more expensive, close to that $2,000 price point. So I think that the Tour Plus is reasonably priced given its specs and my personal experience with it. This bike didn't blow me away, but it was more or less what I was expecting and was hoping to get out of an e-bike like this. It's a fun bike and offers a stable high-speed ride for commutes or recreational riding with the added ability to perform well on dirt roads or handle some rougher riding if you need. You can check it out down at the link in the description. Leave a like if this video was helpful or entertaining. Subscribe for more e-bike and PEV content and I will see you in the next one.